Hello everyone. So I got a question about how to download and add a library part like a schematic part and footprint to your own ORCAD project. So how you do that is you go to the manufacturer's website or to the distributor's website. And let's say you go to mouser.com. They use the Samaxis system or whatever it is to get ECAD models and to generate them for you. So what you do is go find a part you're looking for. For our example, it's a PIG 18 F425, wait, F4520. Then you click on this little icon here. And then this icon, like this window shows up and it shows you the symbol, the footprint, and how it looks in 3D. So you would download the ECAD models, right? And then when you download it, you you get this folder. You unzip the folder on your desktop or wherever it is, and you have this e -dub EPW file. So let's open up this README file and see how we're supposed to install this library. The PCB part libraries require free software to convert them into your ECAD format. So we go to pcblibraries.php. We're going to install the library loader, and the instructions are in this video, really. Uh, at least I hope so. So let's save as to a specific location. I want to go to like my uh, let's see, let's go to my desktop probably. It's my hardware projects. Mm. Let's put it in the pick folder. Save it right there. It's running a security scan on here. Now I'm going to open the folder and then run right click and extract to this folder it opens up we have the library loader in general and then there's another readme that shows you how to install it so let's install click next and this is the folder that it gets installed in so keep this in mind click next go ahead with the process click close to exit and there you go. If you want more information, you can click on the README. Is this the same thing? Okay, double click on the library loader desktop shortcut. All right, so let's go and see if we get a library loader. Library loader. Oh, perfect. This is the application. You choose your software tool. Now I have my downloads folder, Arduino. Okay, interesting. Now let's choose something else. Let's choose our downloads folder to be somewhere like um, there's a folder here called hardware projects. I think I'll go to my documents, my second documents folder, make a new folder called hardware. And I make a new folder called parts. Click OK. My ECAD tool is ORCAD, but let's see if they have. OK, so they lump those two in one ORCAD, ca ORCAD capture slash Allegro. Oh, OK. You can search for parts or you can open an ECAD model. So I'm already logged in. If it asks you to log in or sign in, that's what you put in. I, I have my cursor at learnorcadonline.com, but I'm retiring that email soon. Let's open an ECAD model. So let's say we want it to be on our desktop. Here's the EPW file. So you click open. And then you wait a little bit. Okay. We have our settings. These instructions come up. A lot of detailed instructions uh, on how to import everything. And so I'll, I'll post this link in the description below. But if we go into the folder that has the hardware we're looking for, let's go into parts. That's pretty cool. And now that we have these files, we have a 3D object. This we have the step file, 
we have the EPW file. What do we do here? Well, let's open up ORCID capture. Or better yet, let's let's generate the footprint. I think I want to do that one. The instructions for the footprint are here. So this is a schematic. You must ensure that your downloads folder is included in the library pad path. Yeah, okay. Start here for pad path and your downloads folder, build footprint. Okay, so wait a second, we have a dot bat file. Okay, 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 okay. All right. This is fine. So let's let's open up our PCB editor. I think it's going to use 17.2, so let's go to PCB editor light 17.2. Hopefully this works for the light version. All right. So now that we are in PCB editor light, let's set up the paths. So let's go to setup user preferences paths and library this is where we set the pad path for pad stacks and stuff like that i have a lot of folders in here but don't worry about it click on your little icon and in the ellipses then we're going to go to hardware parts click ok we're going to add that and i'm going to right click and copy this path and click ok we not only want the pad path looking in there we want the psm path as well so we're going to paste that hit enter click ok what else do we want Maybe the step facet path, sure, who cares, right? So place that, that's for like step models and the step mapping path, same folder. Hit enter, what else do we want? We want the step path there for sure. Click okay. And then tech path, no, it's fine. Let's click apply then okay, then do that. So now what we have here, what do we have here? Double click on the bat file. All right, let's do this. Let's check out the settings. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Now click open ECAP model or search for parts. Looks like it's configured. I believe. So what happens once we actually look inside the folder now. It's pretty bizarre, isn't it? Okay, I had to do a quick check. <laughs> so I set the I had the setting set to version 17.4 folder, but for the pad path, I should have set this to version 17.2. So let's go to PC, this PC, and then go to cadence, SVP version 17.2 share, PCB, PCB underscore lib symbols, and then click OK. Really, the only thing that changes is the is the the thing here. So I would actually even put like a two. Oh, I can't modify it. What a shame. No worries though. It keeps the folder expanded. And for the step path, hmm. Share local PCB step. Okay. Click OK. And then now, once that setting is set, you can do open ECAT model. Double click on it. It gets generated. It tries to open the instructions, but I think it doesn't open it again if you already have it open. So now click open, search for parts. 
Right. It seems like it did the job. Let's double check. So let's go to cadence SPV underscore 17.2. Actually, we don't even have to do all that just yet. Let's open up ORCAD capture to import the library part first. Whoops. Let's get rid of this shortcut. Now let's go to ORCAD release, ORCAD capture, CIS light. And we're going to navigate to the folder where we downloaded the part. So this is in the documents hardware parts folder. We're going to file, import, and library XML. The library XML was a file that was generated in the parts folder. See this XML file over here? This is what we want. We're going to import that into and transform it into a typical ORCID capture library file with the OLB extension. So let's do hardware parts. And this is the XML we want. You can do a couple of things with these options. I'll leave it as is and then just click OK. In the session log window at the bottom, you'll see creating library, then saving library. Then we'll open that library by looking for the o an OLB file under the parts folder. So, or whatever folder you downloaded the, the files in. And then it gets loaded, you double click on it, and then you ex examine it. Let's minimize this. All right, so the part has been loaded, and this is just like how we saw in the preview on the web page. This is how it looks. Now, it's attached to a PCB footprint. So to find out what the PCB footprint name is, that was automatically generated in our symbols folder, we look here. It says PCB footprint. We can use this name. Let's do a control C to copy this name. And just go to the PCB editor light. Okay, so I loaded PCB editor. I, and now with PCB editor open, we want to, oh yeah, open that footprint. Let's go to file open. And we'll be looking for DRA files. And where's the footprint? Well, it's in the default folder for the footprints. You need to go into local disk C cadence 17.2 share. I know that it's in this folder because I made the settings look, I, I, may, I set the settings here in the tool. So it's in this location. All right, and PCB, PCB underscore lib symbols. Now I'm gonna look for this footprint, which is in my search thing. Oh, it'd be great if I could just Oh, it doesn't show up there. Let's see. QFP. Hmm. Maybe it's still in my 17.4 folder. In any case, you get the idea. So let's see. Let's just double check. Yes, it is. All right. So when you zoom in, that's what you get. And then this is, let's take a look at the 3D view. Ah, it's, it's a bit tricky. In any case, you can, uh, let's say if it doesn't map properly, you can try the process again. Just follow the process that they show in their instructions. Otherwise, you can do a step package mapping and look for this chip. And then... Lo and behold, it's automatically put on there, but that's because when I added the step model to the default step model folder, it uh, it found it. Click save, click close. Now when we do the 3D view, it, it appears just like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so that is the end of that. That is how you uh, create a library part. And then what you could do then, once you have your 
schematic part, you can go to File, New, Create Your Own Library, and then see you can right click, copy this part, and right click, paste it in your own library. Then you're going to right click your library name that you just created. It's called Save As and call it, I would Save As and then call it My Library or something like that. And then you save that in your parts thing. You can add any part from any other library to your own library. And then you can start building this out and filling this out. For let me show you another example. You can uh, also like open a different library, say your CapSim library, this PC, local disk C, cadence 17.2, tools, capture, library. And it doesn't have to be CapSim, it could be connector, right? And then in this library, you look at all the connectors. Then you grab like an eight header connector or something. Oh, okay. It looks like I can't copy any parts from this multi, like this hundred part library, but you know the drill. You can, if you have the full version, you can right click copy and then go back here to your own library, right click and then paste. And then uh, now I already still have this part in my library, uh, like copy to my clipboard. So I'm just showing you the process again. You can do this with any other library. You close the original library whose part you copied from, and there you go. So yeah, that's how you can build your own part libraries that way. All right, this is a bit longer than I was expecting, but that's how you would add uh, parts from some axis. I might do a cleaner tutorial next time but that's how you do it.